This episode of The Clear Out was recorded on the 5th of October 2022 at home in Wicklow. And it is an exploration of the idea of power. Who has power over you? Who do you let have power over you? What has power over you? And yeah, all of that sort of thing. It's amazing when you think about that idea, how many areas of life it touches, where the power dynamic can be at play. And I don't, I, yeah, I'm not overly comprehensive um, in how far I cast my net, but I use some prompts to to get me there um, and to, to help me weave the thread through the episode. So um, and there's also an excruciatingly cringy moment that I have, which I will never live down. Um, or maybe I will. Maybe that's hyperbole, but um, you'll know it when it comes. Uh, I, I I do draw attention to it about halfway through the episode. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's what's coming up. Um, power and what you can do with uh, changing the power dynamics in your life. Uh, and I also have a little thing to promote, um, which if you're in my part of the world, you'd be able to take part in if you're interested. So that's also coming up. Okay, so that's it. I will see you around the corner. Cheers. Bye. Not gonna change my mind. Leaving the dream Hi, my name is Dara Clear and you're listening to The Clear Out. How are you? How's it going? How's she cutting? Is everything okay? Good. Or, I'm very sorry to hear that, depending on your answer. So, um, here we are. Another week has passed and it's time to unload. <laughs> unload at the mic and share share what's been going on what's been going on in the the ether that accumulates in the recesses of my cranium it's wellness with attitude again and what permutation that's going to take today i'm not entirely sure i i had some really nice feedback on last week's episode where I tried to make sense of my thoughts around uh, the unfolding of events in Iran and the death of Masha Amini and the protests of those brave uh, Iranian and I presume Kurdish women uh, in various parts of Iran and the neighboring areas, women who are saying enough is enough and asserting their their conviction i suppose that they shouldn't be forced to wear a hijab if they don't want to and if you want to i suppose their thinking is off you go but stop enforcing it on us anyway if you want to hear more about what i thought of, about that check out last week's episode that was uh episode 71 and not episode 70 um as i named it in the little video summary i did on social media yesterday i was like episode 70 i was like no it wasn't it was episode 71 lashing through lashing through the eps the eps yeah i'm on um this is ep 72 it's going really well getting some big numbers yeah yeah no no look we're all surprised the whole team um yeah we might need to upscale our operation um we're looking at yeah we're looking at some uh office space in manhattan um yeah tokyo uh berlin and um yeah we're also also considering clonmel um you know which i think is is really the the up and coming destination um a lot of i'm, I'm hearing a lot of buzz about clonmel 
um yeah you know the 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 bulmer's distillery is it's got a its own little kind of bespoke um you know homegrown thing going on now so uh no we're really really into that so yeah no it's um yeah as i said you know it it, it, it we're all surprised although you know if i'm being completely honest i'm not surprised at all because i had a i had a vision about this um about this podcast i just thought yeah it's gonna go big so when i say we're all surprised what i'm actually saying is they're all surprised the rest of my team i'm not surprised at all um i was born to win (laughs) uh yeah uh so there you go that's that's it does does that voice even exist in my head i don't think so not for real i think i'd uh, kick that guy out fairly quick i first thing i'd ask him to do is to stop speaking like that please what do you mean? Um, okay, so yes, I have four words in my head that are going to be my prompts for today's content, for today's issuings, the issuings fourth. So here are the four words. See what you think of these. The first word is hipster. Hipster. The second word, and I'm going to spell it for you, and then I want you to pronounce it for yourself. Say it out loud. It's a short word, only five letters. This is the word. It's H-O-V-E-R. Some people don't believe you pronounce H the way I did, with the H sound. So if you prefer, it's H-O-V-E-R. Ah, H O V E R. How do you pronounce that word? Just, just, just check with yourself there. Did you make it sound like it rhymes with lover? Because if you did, you're wrong. <laughs> that word is hover. Ah, uh, ah, uh, hover. I think that's the same sound as in like, don't bother me. Don't bother me. Don't hover. You're bothering me. So hover. That's another word. Okay. We have hipster. We have hover. Not hover. Have you met my lover? (laughs) Hipster. (laughs) Hipster. Hover. Power. Power. Another potent five letter word. Power. This is like uh, an episode of Audio Wordle, which I call Hurdle. That's a H-E-A-R-D, not H-U-R-D, Hurdle. And finally, my last word, holistic. Holistic. Ha. <laughs> ho, 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 light tyke. Holistic, okay? Hipster, hover power holistic and we're going to see we're going to see if i can weave a thread through the eyes of those four word needles um yes so um yeah this is (laughs) this is uh this is a new idea instead of me well which i rarely do writing down notes i'm just going to maybe bump out a few key words and see if I can retain them. Actually, funnily enough, there's a guy. Oh man, what's his name? MC MC Mac? No, Harry Mac. That's it. Harry Mac. So Harry Mac is an American, a white American guy. He's a rapper. And he does something very cool. You can see lots of his videos online. And what he does is he approaches people in the street. You might see a group of people hanging around and he'll go up to them and he'll say, hey, I want to do a freestyle for you, a freestyle rap. And um, he basically says, come on, give me, give me, you know, four, three or four of your most creative words. And people just spit words at him and he just grabs four and he goes, okay, and then here we go. And he has a little, uh, you know, some sort of music player on his person and he starts laying down a beat and then he just or maybe he doesn't when he's out in the street because he also does it in his home studio uh via zoom 
Um, but the same principle. He just gets people to hit him with a few words and he just goes off on uh, a freestyle rap, which is, it, it doesn't matter if you don't get rap, like rap, care for rap. It's just his sort of um, mental dexterity and his verbal dexterity and his quickness of thought and how he incorporates those words and starts responding to what he sees in front of him and drops in things he sees in front of him like people's what they're wearing or you know their their hairstyles or something in the area maybe some you know something on an advertising board or whatever but um it's absolutely brilliant now on a, there's a part of me that recognizes there are certain rhythms and verbal flows that are patterns that he has kind of you know entrenched in his brain in his learning in his memory but even still i mean and that's not to that's not to make less of what he's doing um yeah it, it like it, it's just it's just brilliant like it's just he's been doing this for years um i think he's in his maybe he's in his late 20s or early 30s but uh, he is killing it and yeah it's just a bit of fun and also he's just really enthusiastic and just just brings this real boost of kind of positive energy and it's just play he's just it's, it's just so playful and fun and yeah people just the, the people from whom he's got the words they just they're just thrilled at watching it unfold so if you want to give yourself a bit of a chuckle and be a little bit amazed by what this guy can do go and find harry i'm pretty sure that's his name harry mack um yeah, I might I might do a sneaky check of that while I'm while I'm speaking, and um, if I if I have to correct it, I will. But otherwise, that is correct. Um, okay, how did I jump to him? Oh yeah, the four words idea, the four words. So yes, that's 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 why that jumped into my head. Good old good old Harry Mack. Um, so my first word was hipster. So. I think I've mentioned before I have I get this um this email a little newsletter that comes to me 5 days a week and it's called a word a day so the it's from wordsmith and you can subscribe I always think if you're interested in language curious about the etymology of words you can subscribe so yeah it's wordsmith.com org and you can subscribe to their word a day newsletter or their wordsmith newsletter but it's um yeah it yeah I, I find it very interesting and diverting and they throw in quotes and usages uh, and today's word was hipster and i was like oh hipster so the meaning of hipster if you didn't already know is one whose interests in clothing music etc tend to be outside the mainstream okay that's fine but then the kicker the little clause at the end of this definition especially in a self-conscious way there's the rub so clothing music etc is a bit vague isn't it um interests in in what in what is fashionable interests in what is cool um trends what is hip on ce moment at the moment um yeah hipsters so um it also tells us uh that the word hipster formerly it meant a person who carries a hip flask so that's pretty simple, okay? Oh, he's a hipster. She's a hipster. The word has also been used for certain articles of clothing. Hip huggers. Clothing that sits on the hips instead of the waist. The body part is clearly visible. Um, but the current sense of the word is apparently from the slang hep, H-E-P, which means aware or up to date. So hep cat, I remember hearing hepcat in some contexts so hep so up to date knowing what's going on having one's finger on the pulse feels it feels in a way like this could be a a distant cousin of woke 
being up to date, being aware. Um, but yeah, I mean, hipsters, I, I mean, I think of the sort of 50s jazz and literary scenes, maybe, and sunglasses and smoking and berets and non-demonstrative um, or like not, not non-excessively demonstrative um, displays of approval um yeah very self-contained um yeah and now qu- qu- coincidentally coincidentally the quote the quote which is um a thought for today um whoever curates this um newsletter they always put a quote from a person who was born on the day of the uh, the newsletter being sent out so this is a quote from I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but is it Vaclav or Vaslav Havel, who was the former president of Czech Republic and a writer? I think he was a poet as well, wasn't he? But his quote is, There are times when we must sink to the bottom of our misery to understand truth, just as we must, just as we must descend to the bottom of a well to see the stars in broad daylight. Hmm. Would that work? I mean, if I'm in the bottom of the well and I'm looking up at the sky and it's broad daylight, could I see the stars? Does he not mean that literally? Um, In any case, the phrase, the bottom of our misery, I'm just going to swap out. um, Yeah, I'm going to swap out the, 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 the possessive pronoun our and drop in my. Um when we must sink to the bottom of when yeah the bottom of my misery that phrase and the word hipster seem to chime very well together they chime very well together for me anyway hipsters and the bottom of my misery that really would be one version of hell for me to be stuck in a room with nothing but hipsters um, and imagine just to add to the the nightmarish hellishness of this image, maybe in the adjoining room, which I'm I'm free to go to the adjoining room if I want. I could walk through there, but it would be full of real estate agents. Um, I mean, really, in that situation, I'd just be looking for the box with my name on it and a gun inside it. Because that would be a more pleasurable way to go rather than to spend eternity with hipsters or real estate agents. Now, both hipsters and real estate agents may feel slighted by the the comparison. Um, the (laughs) the, the, The lowest of the low. (laughs) I was thinking hipster definition, a particularly odious and irritating human being um yeah (laughs) it's yeah i don't know it's so funny i mean maybe i was trying to i was trying to (laughs) i was trying to look at like what is it what is it about hipsters and i mean hipsters you know it has a very particular connotation nowadays but i mean hipsters have been around for ages and it's that idea i think of being self-consciously um self-consciously hip and self-consciously cool and presenting oneself as being the arbiter of taste um from a very young age i just cottoned on to that and i was like i call bullshit i'm like no i don't believe this pose um i just yeah i i i just had a a nose for it and when my radar was just like i don't buy this and um yeah for some reason that type of personality and i you know there were some among my amongst my friends there were definitely that 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 identity existed um and i just found it i just found it a very sort of judgy and intolerant sort of mentality <laughs> and i know you think i'm talking about myself <laughs> that, yeah, there you go if you, if you want to 
<laughs> maybe nothing else sums me up better the, the, the being than judgy and intolerant as a 17 year old or 18 year old um being surrounded by people whose lifestyles i uh, i didn't approve of um but i'm saying they they, they were the the judgy intolerant ones the ones who are apparently hip and cool um yeah it was a very always a very clicky kind of atmosphere and you're either in or you're out and you're always um it was always possible that you're going to be the the subject of their derision or their you know the focus of humiliation um because you just weren't in the know and not talking about the right things um but then also you know it, 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 there's also an aspect of young men wanting to pose cuz i don't know this is now okay this is i may be way off the mark here i feel we're in the domain of of men particularly when it comes to this kind of thing and it's not that there aren't women who can be just as pretentious um and just as willing to drape themselves in the, the the dressings of cool um but there's a particularly male peacocking vibe about being a poser or a hipster and i do i am conflating those two ideas knowingly willingly um but i i just always felt it was yeah there was some real phoniness in the mix and a real try hard thing going on that i just instinctively recoiled from and if i'll just throw myself onto the analyst's couch for a millisecond perhaps it's because i was always afraid that i wasn't cool oh no i'm not cool the cool kids don't think that i'm cool what am i gonna do look at me i'm wearing a trilby hat <laughs> i am um, yeah i don't know i think there was always too much of a, a clown in me um and i don't mean like a performative clown even though that was in the mix when i was a lot younger but i just think there was too much i could just see the the, the ludicrousness of it all um and even still many many years later there's always a part of me that goes yeah it would be nice it would be nice to be cool <laughs> in the in the aesthetic sense the cool aesthetic um i mean yeah, you think of that you think of cool as an aesthetic cool as a aesthetic philosoph philosophical movement and the first person i think of is miles davis uh and that kind of cool and that like is ice cold and of course he had the album the birth of the cool and something about those those tunes that jazz from that era it's some there's something so fierce um in its in its coolness um and like that's a whole other level and that doesn't feel phony um connected as it was to some extraordinary expression of musical soul um and i'm not using soul there in the the, the, the music sense of the word but what miles davis could pour into uh, and produce from his his instrument his trumpet um ah just so 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 good uh but yeah i i mean there was always part of me that was like yeah could i be cool have i ever ever been cool in that sense and i don't think i have been <laughs> and there's there's part of me that i just can't be bothered the effort to maintain um uh you know yeah to maintain the the facade when there might be too good a joke to be made too much of a laugh to be had um i don't know that's also it's, it's where my sense of humor is and you know it's also it's also an impulse to disarm 
it's also an impulse to get the gag in against myself first um maybe and then of course that speaks to you know deeper more profound uh hurts and insecurities and self-esteem issues <laughs> i'll kick myself before you kick me boom now what what follows won't be as bad because i've already prepared myself for it this is all i'm worth okay so hipster how from hipster do we get to hover well they're both h words for a start in fact of course holistic is another h word so it's the triple h episode the triple h hipster hover holistic the holistic hipster hovered hovering with holistic hipsters um okay so before i drop in an overriding thesis let me just go to hover for a second so hover somebody oh, i was looking at i was looking at a youtube video earlier about some technological technical issue uh, a technical query on my part around recording and and i'm 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 hoping to start producing the podcast in video form um because those who know tell me video is the way forward video is the future um and again <laughs> it's like it's not like i'm dying to make videos and have that out there it's it's purely um purely mercenary it's just will a video actually help the podcast will it attract more listeners more viewers more subscribers and yeah why not okay so that may be coming so anyway i was looking at a little technical video and it was a young american woman and she used the word hover hover as i said hover rhyming with lover and anytime i hear that particular pronunciation of that word i always do a little whoa what was that my ears my brain just dive on it like a bird of prey <coughs> and i just pluck that word out of their sentence and go what the hell so yeah hover and i'm trying to think i feel like i might have heard some australians say that as well although you'll be very relieved to hear i just checked with my wife i wrote that word on a piece of paper and i said how do you pronounce that and she was like hover and i was like yes that is correct thank you wife would you like to go on a hovercraft sometime yes oh look at that there's a fly hovering over the dirty dishes so <laughs> hover please don't say hover so it's one thing when you hear somebody mispronounce a word and you think oh that was a little a little stumble and that's unique to that individual but when you hear people use a word and you think oh this is they, they actually they all say it this way and I, I didn't even check and i didn't even i didn't use my my little my little tool my little google pronunciation tool to see is that actually the american english pronunciation so i might just indulge my curiosity here and check it hover pronunciation let's go oh they're not giving me the, the google one why not how strange bloody google maybe i'll go back to hover meaning dun, dun, dun. this is exciting isn't it no now let's see oh here we go hover hover now yeah, that's the english pronunciation let's have a look again hover and funnily enough, they don't seem to be offering the American pronunciation. What the hell? Okay, so in that case, perhaps the deduction is hover is the only pronunciation. Okay, so you're going, why in God's name am I banging on about this bloody word? So the reason is I was thinking, and now this is going to kind of propel us 
to the third word. I was thinking about this idea of power. And originally, when I was thinking about power, it was sort of a it was sort of a, um, an addendum to last week's episode because as ever with me, it's usually after I finished recording an episode that there's a further clarification in my thinking or a further unfolding of whatever thesis I was hovering around. And last week after speaking about the repression of women in Iran and religious repression and religious violence and religious hypocrisy and the talking about that central idea I was working with last week that when faith or when religious thinking and teaching becomes dogma that is weaponized my argument is that suggests the the religion or the the people the the adherents of the religion don't truly truly feel that the religion can withstand criticism so they don't truly believe it's robust enough or strong enough or true enough to withstand criticism to withstand resistance and therefore they police it with absolute ruthlessness and my argument is like the harder they're pushing to protect it and say how great it is the more i have doubts about the true strength and validity of the faith or certainly the true strength and validity of how they are interpreting the faith um, or interpreting their sacred texts or whatever um so that was, you know, that, that was probably the main idea I was talking about in last week's episode. But afterwards, I was trying to think about the more immediate human consequences and thinking about the women who were standing up to the powers that be in Iran. And that's, we're talking predominantly men, of course. Um, and I was trying to kind of think about it in terms of, well, ultimately, what is what is this offense what is what is the threat to iranian islamic orthodoxy um what is the threat posed to that institution by women you know female iranian citizens removing the hijab what is the threat um and so they'll say it's a, I, I guess, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't find out more. But I mean, I presume they're putting it into religious terms and going, well, it's an offense against the Quran or it's an offense against Allah um, or Muhammad or I don't know what. Um, it's offense, you know, it's an offense against our, our, our faith, our, our state. Um, but I kind of go, is, is that really what the issue is, lads? Is it not that this is a threat to your power that this is somebody defying your power this is somebody saying i refuse to let you have power over me anymore i refuse to let you dictate how i should live my life i refuse to let you dictate what i should wear how i should present myself how i should express my personhood I refuse to let you have that power over me. Um, and I was thinking to myself this morning, this idea of having control over another person. Now, being a parent, uh, I probably try to exert quite a bit of control over my daughter. But my daughter is a child. And I'd like to think by the time she is a young woman, um, that she will be given a lot more freedom and i will cede any pretension to control i mean even now it's uh it's a bit of a delusion <laughs> but the idea that i would you know the idea that i would try to control her in an ongoing way is um yeah i i i find it sort of offensive um and an exercise in self-harm um 
in, in, in another way. I mean, the attempt to control any other person is is largely futile and speaks to a terrible fear or panic or unwellness in the person who wants to control. And certainly if you reflect for a millisecond on abusive relationships or relationships where a partner is being gas lit, uh, that's a type of um, power dynamic. That's a type of controlling controlling behavior that comes from a very unhealthy place um and certainly when i come back to myself and if i think there have been times when perhaps i mean look i'm, I'm just speaking in, in in i'm trying to speak in a very you know non-dramatic way and not i'm not trying, I'm not trying to pitch this into an area of actual abuse but if i think there have been times when my reaction to some of my daughter's behavior at times has been disproportionately angry. I could color that in abusive terms. I could say, well, that's been abusive. Um, and it's, and you know, often my trigger is I've lost control of a situation. And I mean, that used to mean that, that, that would have been a fear of mine as a teacher when I started teaching and working with some pretty difficult classes and challenging uh, young people um who had no reason to to give me (laughs) any respect as a substitute teacher um and there were times when that control just couldn't be couldn't be had and over time i changed my thinking and my thinking became much more around myself and controlling myself and trying to control my own responses and having a clear set of parameters in in my head before stepping into a classroom with a class that I knew were going to be challenging. And, and that served me very, very well. Um, I mean, in a way, it's a bit like the more control I had, it's like if I was, <laughs> it's like this, it's like if you're, you're a wo- if you're wounded, if you fall out of a boat, you know, and you know there's a, there's, a, there's a shark in the water, and as you fall out of the boat, you've cut your hand, and then you go, oh my god, and I start panicking and flailing around and spreading the blood everywhere, so it attracts more sharks until I'm you know torn to shred, torn to shreds by a, a frenzied, um, I don't know, do, do, do sharks are, are they? Is it a school of sharks? a pack of sharks, a gang of sharks, a classroom of sharks. Um, But it's the same idea. It's like, if I can control that bleeding, if I can control the flow of blood, then I won't send the animals into a feeding frenzy. And in a way, some of those really tough classes, particularly in my early years of teaching, you know, 30 plus kids in a class, secondary school students who are just like f this this is the last place we want to be this is the last guy we want to be hearing from or talking to or behaving for and as the blood flowed liberally from my terrified psyche a feeding frenzy would ensue and then then a you know a a kid would be sent (laughs) from the classroom to the to the year head who was a teacher i became you know very pally with and he'd come and just stand in the doorway and like every every kid in the room their face would just go white <laughs> and my friend would come in and he would just give them this ferocious lecture about how i was an educated man and i was that they that they knew nothing and that i was there to help them and by god they better show me some respect and you just, you know, some of them, they'd just be like, you know, the bottom lip would be starting to kind of quiver a little bit. Um, and I was just like in awe of my friend. It's like, oh, my God, <laughs> this, the rage that he could bring to bear and just cow the uh, the pack of animals. Um, and the thing is, I recognized I couldn't do that. I recognized that wasn't really in my personality. And I used to, you know, you, you try, I try it every now and again, try and be like really alpha and hyper, you know, not aggressive, but like to really try and lay down the law. And it's just exhausting, exhausting. 
Um, and in the end, I realized, no, I'm, um, I'm more of a specialist in soft power. <laughs> Staying calm, being charming and agreeable, holding firm to my, my position, being very clear about the outcomes I want to achieve, not getting rattled and being very good at avoiding um, avoiding and not exacerbating conflict. Um, yeah, so, and to speak further to that, to use one of my least favorite phrases, well, I'll, I'll speak to that now. Um, so yeah, one time I was in a classroom with um, students who were in their final year of uh, secondary school or, or high school, as you say, in other parts of the world. And there was um, a very sullen, surly looking guy at the back, back of the room. And uh, yeah, he took an instant dislike to me. He was at the back of the classroom. I was sitting behind my desk. I was probably doing a bit of introductory banter with the rest of the class who seemed open to having me there. And the next thing, uh, a chunk of glass flew past my head and hit the wall behind me. Um, when I say a chunk, the glass was probably about 10 mil, uh, thick, uh, maybe, uh, you know, getting towards half an inch thick. It was probably, uh, triangular shaped and, uh, would fit comfortably in the palm of your hand. But, um, had it hit me, uh, it would have hurt. And in that situation, choosing not to panic, get hysterical, get really angry and shouty, ball the guy out of it no i don't think it would have helped so i just had a quiet word with the uh the principal of the school <laughs> and he was never seen again um no he was seen again but he was uh yeah disciplined through appropriate channels that's a true story okay anyway power that idea then of power who has power over you what has power over you and how much power do you have over yourself Ooh. good questions good questions so you can think about that idea of who has power over you or what has power over you or how much power you have over yourself. That's one way of phrasing it. But another way of phrasing it is, who do you allow to have power over you? What do you allow to have power over you? And what in yourself do you choose not to control? What do you choose not to have power over you? over yourself what do you give permission to in yourself um so when i go back to the first two words hipster and hover and let's just clarify that a hipster is a type of person that i allow to have a certain power over me and the power that hipsters have over me is they irritate me and get my back up and annoy me and bother me and sort of offend me <laughs> and it seems to be a disproportionate amount of power that i give them um and my issue then like the issue is well why and my issue i suppose is i find them insincere and i find them phony and that insincerity and phoniness and falseness is what bothers me and often i I, I measure a person by their capacity to be honest, their capacity to be sincere, their capacity to be present. And um, this has played out for me a couple of times on, uh, on social media with people I've known. And the, um, the, 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 I think I, I may have mentioned one of these scenarios before, but there was a, a woman I taught with briefly in, in Melbourne, an American woman, Lots of Americans being referenced in today's episode. Um, Harry Mack, the tech girl, and now a former colleague. 
uh, there were a few Americans that I taught with in, 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 the, in, in, in the English school uh, in Melbourne where I was working before I came back to Ireland. And I, I didn't really know this girl very well, this woman very well. Um, you know, I had a bit of chat. We worked on kind of different shifts. Um, but after I got back to Ireland, I saw her put something up on social media about, you know, changing her life and trying to do something new with her life and pursuing things that were, you know, she was more passionate about. And I felt, oh yeah, I can, I can really relate to that. Um, and I just took it uh, on at surface, you know, value. I thought, okay, it is what it is. She's put something out there that's kind of sincere and decent. And I followed. <laughs> we used to, in, in acting school. We used to talk about following an impulse. So try not to overthink things. Try not to plan or prescribe your next movement. And the idea, I suppose, was to get more in touch with a spontaneous responsive side of ourselves that would theoretically make us better actors there's no guarantee there's no guarantee that will happen and so we were always talking about impulse you know being organic you know moving responding you know from an impulse follow the impulse develop that sensitivity to the impulse anyway i followed the impulse and responded to this this woman's post um with a very sincere um, uh, response. It was like, you know, oh yeah, well done and the best of luck. And it, you know, it was, it was kind of probably a little bit lengthy, um, but nothing, nothing crazy. And as I said, I didn't particularly know her very well. Um, and I thought, okay, well, that'll be nice. You know, might be a bit of an exchange here. She said something, I've said something. And then um, <laughs> ultimately I just got a little, a little like symbol, a little thumbs up. And I just thought, really? <laughs> Is that it then? Okay, right, yeah, cheers, no worries. Um, and similarly, I had a, a guy that used to train with, train with me in uh, Melbourne in the karate club who, um, yeah, I, I, you know, a lot of, a lot of, there was a lot of hipster there. Uh, not a bad guy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and he put something up on social media not that long ago looking for, um, hmm, what was he looking for? He was looking for someone or some place to talk about wellness or mental health or um, a place to discuss that or read about it. Um, and I think he was, yeah, he was saying like in Australia. And I reached out to him and I said, oh, yeah, well, if you didn't know, like I've been sort of writing about this and communicating about this stuff and advocating in this area for a long time via my blog and now the podcast um and you know again i just you know it was a, a very sincere just offer to his 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 query um and again nothing uh i got crickets silence and <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, okay then. So little, you know, you get the little asterisk beside the experience in your in your memory bank. Um, I need to, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Okay, Dara, go into some radical acceptance. Just radical acceptance. Forget all the judgment. Don't be judging anyone. Just let them live. Um, I'm just like, be real. Don't, um, you know, the presentation of something that is meant to be whatever attractive uh right on uh, but really you scratch the surface and it's just empty it's just hollow it's just a vacuum i'm just like okay see you later so the context here is power and i'm like okay that's that's the reason that stuff bugs me and then with the hover hover thing it's a little bit of my control freakery um around language maybe um a little bit of my interest in expressing oneself well or expressing oneself correctly um but but maybe even more than that it's just the aesthetic how wrong a word can sound when not pronounced in the way you're uh, accustomed to hearing it so maybe it's purely that 
So maybe I'm just really sensitive to aural aesthetics. Oh my God, I can't believe he just said hover. Everyone just, just no one speak for a second because I just need to recalibrate and go to a go to a calm, safe place that's just full of hover, hover, ha, hover. Okay, everyone, you can start talking again. It's fine. Okay. Oh, anyway, so yeah, so power. I mean, because I mean, in, in a way, when when you're when your consciousness is snagged by something in a very immediate way, that's an indication of something having power over you, surely. So it might be, I don't know, it could be anything, couldn't it? It could be seeing roadkill. We drove past a dead cat the other day. And my, my wife's like, oh no. Um, so that would be something, for example. Um, it, could be, it could be seeing yet another personal training space open up. It could be seeing another um hipster cafe um it could be seeing another um bookmakers betting betting shop betting agency whatever uh open up on the high street uh, of your of your town instead of a local business um that kind of thing you know it, it, it yeah so whatever it's um keep an eye out keep an eye out for what grabs your attention keep an eye out and okay I suppose you could talk then again we, we we're veering dangerously close to that word trigger what triggers you I mean that's a little, that's a little bit more loaded um oh here's a, here's something just quickly uh, speaking of trigger I was teaching a karate student the other day a young fella and I we were practicing punching stepping and punching so a very standard Karate straight punch, Oyazuki Chudan, a stepping punch to the body. And I was trying to get him to hold back his punching hand um, until it was the right time to launch it. Because if he launched it the second he started moving, his punch is already extended before his legs have reached the, uh, the target zone. So I was like, okay, with your extended hand, just keep that extended hand pushing forward towards your opponent, towards the target. Push it there. Push, push. As you step, keep it extended. Keep it extended. And hold your punching hand back on your hip until the last second. And I started to say, that's your gun in your holster. Now, I know some of the more sensitive listeners might be triggered by that. And that's what made me think of it. I was thinking, and even I was thinking, is that is that appropriate? Is that... Is, <laughs> I was going, should we be talking about guns in holsters? Because I was trying to get this boy to think, okay, I'm just going to hold it back, hold it back to the last second and then take out the gun and fire just when I need to so I can make my punch land at exactly the right time. So, um, I and as I was teaching it, I was going, hmm, maybe this isn't the best metaphor. Because sometimes when I'm teaching kids, instead of saying, look, here's somebody holding a knife to your face, I'll say, here's somebody with a sticky lollipop and they're about to put it in your hair and that won't feel very nice. So I tried to kind of euphemize the weaponry. So I was questioning myself the use of that idea of the gun in the holster. Um, I mean, I grew up watching cowboy movies and the gun didn't represent anything uh, overly sinister or ominous. Um, It was just what cowboys had on their hips um so yeah anyway that's a that's a digression i apologize um but but just to to stay there for a millisecond longer i know like for example my mother wouldn't be a fan of guns toy guns what did i say did i say my mother (laughs) oh my god i've just slipped into freudian hell i think i'm gonna say my wife I'm I'm terrified to go back and check that. Did I just say my mother? Holy hell. <laughs> I'm I just want to hide in my cup. What I want to say was my wife. <laughs> my wife doesn't like toy guns. She's always been triggered by toy guns. Um and yeah, that's uh it's a thing, isn't it? Of course. And 
God knows if you're living in somewhere like the United States and you've been exposed to so many horrendous shootings and mass shootings, massacres, people going off the plantation and yeah, not to mention the amount of victims of uh, shootings by police or security guards who Again, I feel I always want to contextualize that and go, yeah, there may be um, there may be an element of racism in that mix, institutionalized racism, racism. There might also be an element of not being well trained enough. There might be an element of just being terrified. And again, this isn't justification. It's just trying to look at the whole picture. Um, so, yeah, power. So. These you know, this was the area then like, you know, who back to this idea of who do you allow to have power over you and why and how do you extricate yourself from that? Because like, for example, you might look and kind of go, well, this person I'm in love with, I, I'm happy for them to have a certain amount of power over me. I'm happy for there to be a, an exchange of power, a, a power um, dynamic that passes between us and that i don't think that that's necessarily unhealthy i mean that can be a healthy thing to seed ground to yield to allow the other person to hold space um, and give let them have power and hold power um and as long as that is maybe a back and forth thing or there's a sort of a, a power sharing that happens within the relationship that sounds healthy to me and sounds and sounds balanced because if it's just one person having if it's just one person having all the power that's an imbalance and that that chimes back with one of my arguments from last week or the week before about what is natural and there shouldn't be a power imbalance um i mean a power imbalance in the natural world would be like if if lions ate everything or if there was like a proliferation of lions um you know in, in comparison to the numbers of other animals if there was a you know if there was a proliferation of apex predators again citing last week's episode if there was a proliferation of apex predators that would be an imbalance because all the prey would be eaten and it, it, you'd just be left with predators imbalance unnatural doesn't work it's not meant to be that way there has to be a, a natural order to things um and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I must say there is a little bit of my brain that is starting to lean towards. And, you know, don't don't kill me. I know some of my, I know some people who listen are really big into uh, um, global warming and climate change. Um, I'm I just find myself wondering more and more about is, is this not just cyclical and we just happen to be entering a very unpleasant aspect of this current cycle of heating up before cooling down again. Uh, just please don't shoot me. I may just be an idiot. and I haven't looked into the science. But do you know? Do you know? Do you remember? Speaking of power, do you remember the uh, the wildlife... Um, the English kind of um, naturalist, naturalist, botanist, wildlife, nature guy, David Bellamy. Do you remember him? We had, have, we, we, the people of planet Earth, have David Attenborough and his beautiful voice um, and all his natural world um, products. But there was David Bellamy as well. David Bellamy was a very high profile guy, um, you know, in a similar, you know, in a similar mode, who, who basically got blacklisted because he doesn't believe in climate change. He got blacklisted and has been wiped off the, the airwaves and off the screens. Um, so spare a thought. Spare a thought for David Bellamy. I don't think he's a bad guy. I don't think he's nuts. Um, anyway, again, I'm not. I, 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 I'd be terrified of being accused of being a conspiracy theorist. Um, 
obviously there's lots of things we can do better and you know lots of things as individuals you can do to try and to 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 convince yourself you're not contributing too much awfulness to the natural world and looking at what you eat and where things come from and what you do with your waste is all part of that and we try we try in our little way um but then you could go put it back into my power thesis is that just the power of a narrative over us convincing us of something you know we talk about the power of the media and what's presented in the media um the power of influencers the power of products the power of multinationals and conglomerates and big tech um that's power so yes the who's and the what's i mean to reduce it down to its essence you ask yourself the first question who has power over you then the next question is in what way do they have power over you the next question is how does that make you feel does it make you feel good or does it make you feel bad is this person having power over you improving your life or making it worse and if it is the latter what can you do to change that dynamic what can you do to remove either yourself from that situation or remove the other person from the situation and now that is that is the sort of the 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 matrix or they are the kind of the the the, the options at their most basic in their most basic form but it is worth looking at that um like I find, I don't know, do you not find that you have certain people in your life and you have to sort of, you have to sort of adjust yourself depending on who they are. You have to adjust, you have to kind of change your own settings, your own programming. You have to go into a different mode to to accommodate that other person or to survive the exchange Um that's power there's power in in that dynamic um and to go back to what i was talking about with my couple of those stories from teaching the um the idea of looking at what you can control in yourself can be a much quicker way to the solution because it's highly unlikely the other person is going to is going to change um certainly um if it's not of their own volition so that is something that's in the mix and then you go to the other area of what has power over you and it might be something silly like my uh irritation um in relation to hipsters um my my uh a certain amount of control freakery when it comes to to language and pronunciation now my wife would go that's the teacher in you me maybe i don't know i never really think of myself as a as a teacher um but there is something in me um that likes the the rightness of of words i suppose um and again rightness not meaning correct as such but just something about words being in their their natural state and part of a word's natural state is pronunciation i guess you know leaving aside accents um (laughs) yeah so in ireland is it okay to say croissant or do you sound do you sound pretentious if you say croissant yeah can i just get um i'll get two coffees please and actually i'll just get a can i get a bottle of water as well um and one of those cinnamon donuts and uh a croissant please what can i have a croissant <laughs> can i have a croissant okay <laughs> a croissant a croissant uh my brother's giving me grief about dropping in the tea at the end of croissant he's like looking at me like my half my brain has fallen out of my head croissant really 
it's, it's not croissant. He picked me up on uh, crepe as well. Crepe or crepe? J'aime beaucoup de crepe. Can I have a crepe? Crepe? Anyway. Whatever. Okay, so, um, yeah. What has control over you? Now, here we go to get into slightly more serious terrain. When you're talking about what has control over you, you can also talk about habits. Habits and habits and addictions. So something as innocuous as um, scrolling on your phone, scrolling on the phone and sitting on your Instagram page or sitting on your Facebook page. This is something I never did because I never had a Facebook account that I used. I never had an Instagram account. I only started using social media, social media in any proper sense, um, just over a year ago in my attempt to promote this podcast. And now I shudder to think at how much time I've spent idly scrolling through Facebook and scrolling through uh, Instagram. Um, which, even though that can be diverting and even though I can find amusing cat videos and sometimes little quotes from people, uh, famous figures, I go, oh, that's quite cool, actually. Little videos that are sometimes inspiring um, and occasionally seeing stuff from friends and stuff they're doing. Uh, so, you know, all of that can be nice. But then there's like a lot of other just random soporific scrolling, which is not doesn't doesn't feel healthy. And when I put the phone down, I kind of go Ugh. and I always kind of feel like I have to roll my shoulders back and open up my chest and kind of go, oh, my God, did I just really do that for 25 minutes or 45 minutes? And, you know, I was driving yesterday morning. And I passed by a, a, a schoolboy, a teenager who looked very tall, a tall young fella in a school uniform. And he basically looked like a shepherd's crook, uh, by which I mean a tall stick with the top of the stick completely rounded over in a way the, the, the shape of a, a fern frond. Um, and what else was he doing except looking at his blooming phone and I thought oh my god that guy could be like 14 or 15 16 and his posture and the damage he's doing to his back by looking at his phone is just horrendous uh, and I thought wow we're, we're talking about there's going to be just a generation of of kids um, who are going to be growing up with neck and shoulder and back issues because they've been looking at their bloody phones all the time. Um, so that's that's another area of power, the power of the screen, the power of the device. Um, ask yourself, you know, do you, do you have anything like that? Is there something analogous in your own life that has that kind of power over you see i've broken one of my habits more or less sugar used to have a huge hold over me sugar was my addiction sugar was my habit sugar was my coping mechanism one of my coping mechanisms my comforter my my little blankie that i'd snuggle myself in and wrap myself in fizzy cola bottles um and over the last few years, um, I've kind of broken that habit. Now, I still like to have some sweet stuff lying around the house, chocolate, maybe, um, you know, maybe a little bit of ice cream or something. But I even find like I have it there and then I don't, I, I just like knowing that it's there, <laughs> a little backup. And occasionally I'll indulge, but in no way, like, I used to um, and I even find I used to have this really big relationship <laughs> I had a relationship with dessert 
I had this big relationship with desserts and making nice desserts and cooking nice desserts and cakes and lovely desserts coming out of the oven and like this time of year if the weather changing like oh brilliant i can start making bread and butter pudding again and making crumbles and things like that and even that has backed way off and i find you know once i've eaten a good dinner i'm kind of done and if there's nothing that's like really speaking to me oh i'd really like that I might not have anything else after dinner, which is, that really is changing the habit of a lifetime. Um, Oh my God, did you hear what he said? He said he used to eat desserts and now he doesn't. Oh my God, amazing. The guy used to eat desserts and now he doesn't. My mind is blown. Um, Yeah, anyway. But so what am I saying? I'm saying (laughs) I'm saying things can change and I definitely feel the benefits of of kicking that particular habit, kicking that power. But like that can be that can be a very confronting conversation if we're talking about addiction to arguably more destructive substances. And it's not to say that, you know, serious input of sugar can't also be very destructive. But obviously, if we're talking about things like alcohol, if we're talking about drugs, if we're talking about certain medications and that there's an addiction there, if we're talking about cigarettes, of course, these are addictions of different intensity and different consequence. But and it can be confronting to look and go, is this actually a dependency? Because we euphemize, we euphemize our our relationship to these things. Um because you don't want to admit that there is something imbalanced. We don't want to admit that we're a bit scared of our reaction to that thing or or our reaction to what we would do without that thing. Um, And so that is like you're getting into the area of... um, of you know again of of being triggered of something that really impacts you or really affects you um like i certainly know if my um if my wife if if my wife sits down and says oh yeah here i I found this this job advertised online i'd like to have a look at i i can have a, a very strong visceral strong negative you know, visceral response to that. Um, And it's about me wanting my world a certain way and trying to have things in a certain way and being threatened Um, and interpreting. And that this is a big thing. This is a big thing. How do you interpret the thing that comes towards you and you see it as a, a threat? You see it as power um something that has power over you like how are you interpreting that because again you need to examine like why do i respond this way because once you you kind of understand your thinking you can kind of park it in a different place and go oh yeah that's why that's why that upsets me that's why that bothers me that's why it feels so threatening i mean it's like, like, like that's almost um like a an impulsive reaction um you know like kind of when you turn around you, you know you walk around a corner and there's a snarling dog and you get that kind of jolt in your gut it's almost like that and so you go well what what is that what is that fear what is this power i'm giving to this thing and why um and so i know that that talking about that has kind of bled into the last part which was you know what do you allow in yourself to have power over you um and i suppose i've i've spoken i feel quite regularly at this stage now um i mean two of my most frequent references to my uh fluctuating or occasionally present emotional states anger and depression both feature i've spoken about them both fairly regularly on the the podcast and so sometimes there's a part of my brain that goes 
um, why am I allowing this anger to be present? Why am I allowing this depressive state to to be dominant? Uh, why do I give this depressive pattern permission to remain in my life? Now, my thinking is I'm trying to destigmatize it for myself and go, it's okay. This is just a reaction to something. And it's it's a real reaction, a reaction of hurt or sadness or inadequacy or whatever it might be. And it's hit me in such a deep place that I'm I'm going to flatline for 24 hours or 48 hours or, or a week. Um, but I'm not going to lose my mind over this and I'll recognize it is what it is. I'll continue to be functional even though this is present. Um, and this, and, and again, this is a key idea that it doesn't define me. This is one thing that's in the mix. It's one thing that's in my life. It's one thing that's part of my makeup, but it's not the only thing. And it doesn't, even though a depressive state can be very convincing in this, in the other direction, it doesn't, um, it doesn't define, it doesn't define me and it doesn't negate all the other things I do or have done or all the other things I am because that can be a very sparky uh, sharp end of of depression as I occasionally experience it. it it's the negation of all things that are good it's the negation of all the light and it's the, the negation of positivity and you know and good energy and I've learned over time to sort of witness that and not believe it to be true and that again is a an evolution in my own thinking in my own coping and not something i would have been capable of when i was younger so then the question is well in that case does that depressive state really have significant power over me or rather it's a temporary thing a temporary and recurring thing um and yeah anyway i don't i don't want to kind of belabor that point and the same with anger like with anger with anger it's a bit different because i kind of have a strong sense of when my anger is 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 connected to the incident that triggers the anger or when the anger is coming from a much deeper reserve of anger about other things and the incident just happens to be the the release valve or yeah the trigger or the the you know the ignition um and when it's the the latter when it's the, the second one of those then i'm like okay this isn't healthy this is a very unhealthy expression of my anger this means i'm not dealing with the things that are truly making me angry and i need to look at that because i'm being irresponsible and i risk hurting other people and you know, I'm hurting myself as well because I kind of go, I don't, I, that's, that's not, I don't want to be like that. Um, so yeah, so that's, there's an area of power there as well. Okay, so hipster hover power and the final part of this today, and I'm going to finish up with this five or ten minutes, I think. The next thing, the next word was holistic and yes holistic so i will be teaching a course of holistic self-defense in the wicklow area at the end of this month so for four tuesday nights in a row from the 25th of october i will be teaching a holistic self-defense course each night will be two hours and I will teach actual self-defense methods. So defensive and counter attacking techniques. I'm going to teach a little bit of body coordination and body movement. Uh, but I will also be talking about how self-defense isn't just uh, an idea that pertains to being physically attacked and physically defending oneself. My argument is that we can be under attack in many different areas in our life. We can be under attack from within, from, you know, by, we, can, we can attack ourselves. Our own inner dialogue can be something that we weaponize against ourselves. 
we can be under attack within our relationships, within our job. It might be a, a bad relationship with a co-worker. It might be something that is has gone sour or unhealthy within our intimate relationships. Um, it could be coming from the, you know, you, you might, you may have a sense that it is gendered. You may have a sense that it's got other flavors to it, other colors to it, that the attack is coming from society, that the attack is coming from your community, from your culture. Um, it could, you know, our, our sense, our sense of vulnerability, our sense of I've just been attacked can come from anywhere. And I, in this course, I want to look at, well, how do we address that? And I won't, I, I, I'm not going to give away all the secrets now, all my, my resolutions, all my conclusions, all the things that I've been sort of percolating on and cultivating and honing and shaping. Um, but there is something in this about how we think about ourselves, how we assert ourselves, how we present ourselves, our comfort with ourselves. And there is, there is an area here of clear thinking. And one of the, the main concepts that I think informs a self-defense mindset is what do you value? What are the items of value that you want to protect so if you apply that idea to incorporate not just the physical body well i want to protect my body i don't want to receive an attack i don't want to be in pain i don't want to get punched in the face or kicked in the groin um that's fine that can be addressed um but what about internal the internal domain, the psychological and the emotional, um, because those areas, in a way, you're much more likely to be attacked there in your day to day life than to physically be attacked. Because unless you're living in a particularly, I don't know, I mean, like if you happen to be surrounded by a lot of violent people, if the, the, the odds of you being attacked are very high because of the area in which you live, because of the age you are, because of your gender, uh, because of your social profile, because of a lifestyle that you have. And let me just put it out there right now. A lot of violence happens between men um, in their 20s. You know, young men, late teens and early 20s is this would be a very... Um, you know, probably a peak time for violence to happen, for physical attacks to happen between young men. And it coincides with the brain being in a stage of development that is open to risk-taking, which is why you have a lot of drug fatalities, why you have a lot of over-drinking um, and antisocial behavior. It's, often, it's, not, it's not just because of um, maybe superficially more obvious contributory factors um, and lifestyle choices. It's also to do with what the brain at that age is saying, what the brain at that age is giving a green light to. Um, so that's in the mix as well. And you think, well, if you're not a young guy, maybe you're less likely to be under threat of attack. Um, now, of course, anyone can be attacked at any time. The, you know you can't there's, you can't litigate against that other than locking yourself in a room and never leaving the house but I'd argue that that would do a lot more damage in a way than um, being on the receiving end of a punch once in your life um, so yeah that's what's going to be happening I'm going to be teaching that course at the Broca Centre in Lara in County Wicklow um, so that is coming up so if you're in the, the Wicklow area the Wexford area the Kildare area you can just you can just come over the Wicklow gap and drop down to the Broca Centre there um, if you're in the South County Dublin area if you're listening from further afield 
<laughs> you could come. It's guaranteed to be a fun time because I've never seen anyone learn self-defense who just doesn't have a great time doing it um, and just enjoy engaging with their own sense of power and their own sense of physical capability and psychological and emotional capability because you have to bring that into the mix as well as i say it's a, it's a mindset it's a headspace and it starts with it starts with valuing yourself and um, that's going to be a lot of fun so that's holistic self defense that's going to be four tuesday nights in a row from october 25th um, so yeah starting in a few weeks i'm really looking forward to it so that was the um that was the final piece of the puzzle today from hipster to hover to power to holistic and the holistic approach to looking at power and maybe not letting some people have power over yourself and giving yourself more power okay i think um i think that's plenty i think that's plenty and um yeah the the freudian nightmarish moment i have it, it has been haunting me for the remainder of <laughs> of this recording but so be it i i refuse to edit i will talk to you soon if you like what you heard and you like what you hear uh, as a as a dedicated weekly listener to the podcast you can support me on social media you can throw me some love oh please 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 throw me some love i will catch it and hold it close you can throw me some love on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, where you'll find me as the Clear Out Podcast. You can even send me a tweet uh, at the Clear Out 2 on Twitter, or you can email me, although very few people have, at the Clear Out Live at gmail.com. Also, wherever you're listening, you should see two links. One is a supporter link where you can donate. Uh, uh, an amount of money of any of any size i'll take seven million euros please um <laughs> or if you want to become a regular contributor to the podcast you can become a patron and just send a small sum once or twice a month the price of a, a cup of coffee the price of a, a bar of chocolate and it all helps it all helps it all motivates me it makes me feel, yeah, this is something that's worth doing. So even just getting some lovely feedback on last week's episode just gives me such a great boost and go, oh, cool. I'm not kidding myself here. This is, uh, look, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what hedging I do. I'm going to keep doing this because I'm enjoying myself. And that's all I care about. Little old me. And you should care about little old you. Okay? I give you permission. Okay? I bestow that power on you. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And mind yourself. Take care. Go well. And I will talk to you again next week. All the best. See you. Bye.